All right, welcome back. We're going to be doing another uh, tutorial here. This is another request. We are going to be looking at placing dust and dirt on top of assets uh, for use in the Unreal Engine. So if you've got something that's meant to be a little dusty or dirty, um, we're going to be going in and, and kind of showing you a global way that we can do that um, across all of your assets. So this is kind of a, uh, a material that you would do uh, that you can apply to uh, more than one asset. And so I'll kind of show you a really neat way of setting that up. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to create the, the, the pattern um, for the dust and dirt. Um, and that's what I'm going to do first here. So I've got Substance Designer open, and I'm going to make something that's going to be um, represent the dust and dirt here. So I'm going to, I'm going to do something pretty quick, but some pretty, pretty simple here as well. So the first thing that I want is uh, I just want some noise. Uh, and I want a kind of a bunch of different kinds of noise here. I want to... I, this is going to be tiling and it's going to appear everywhere. And so the, um, the better I can get this to look, um, the more believable it's going to be when you see it on an asset. So let's grab uh, black and white spots one, which you can see is this kind of noise type pattern here. Uh, let's grab black and white spots three, which is a, another type of noise here too. And uh, let's grab clouds two maybe. Let's, oh yeah, that looks good. And uh, all I'm going to do is I just want to kind of create a variation of these things here. Maybe we'll do clouds three. Oh, yeah, I like clouds three. Let's get rid of black and white spots three. So all I'm going to do is uh, I want to use these to kind of create a little bit of a, uh, a variation in color. So I'm just going to do that by adding a blend. And we're going to blend in the two clouds nodes using the, um, using the black and white spots nodes. Uh, as a means of doing so. So this is going to give us kind of a, a combination of these two nodes here, giving us, uh, you know, little tiny droplets, little tiny spots, but also some kind of larger areas here as well. <clears throat> now, excuse me, if you wanted to, uh, to play with that even further, uh, we could go in and grab a Gaussian blur, uh, or in this case, uh, not Gaussian, but a, uh, let's see, a high-quality grayscale blur. Uh, that we could use to uh, to tweak the uh, the black and white spots map here like this, which is going to give us uh, a little bit more control here. Um, we'll turn the quality of that blur up, and we'll play down the value, um, just to give us a little bit more control over what we're seeing here. So again, I don't want anything to be too sharp. It's supposed to look kind of like a collection of uh, dust and goop here. Um, I do want to create a normal map from this, and this is going to be a really, really subtle normal map. Uh, I don't want it to be anything really pixelated and noisy like this. Uh, you'll see up close that there's all kinds of grain and stuff going on in here. Uh, and so I'm going to also grayscale blur this before going into the normal map, um, just to soften it up a little bit. Um, let's see, let's a little too much intensity. I just want to get rid of some of the high frequency noise. So a little bit of wobbly like this here. I think it's going to work. So let's put those into the normal. Um, actually, I'm going to keep the blur with the normal. And uh, let's go create a, uh, a gradient map here. So I'm going to grab a, uh, a gradient. And we're going to use our combination node into the gradient. And we're going to go into the gradient editor. And uh, I'm going to kind of pick and choose some values here for our, uh, our dust and dirt. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find online uh, an image of what I consider to be dusty and dirty. And uh, ideally, if you're doing this in a very specific environment um, in Unreal, you know, you, you want to use values and colors, like this is really nice tones in here, uh, but you want to use colors and values, like you can see this matches the wall and everything, like it makes everything feel part of that same environment. Same thing here, if you look at how dusty and dirty this boot is, um, but it's the same kind of values that are on, you know, the other object here, right? Like that dirt, that dust that you're going to get should permeate uh, the entire world. And so by having, um, you know, values that are in common with what's in your world, um, it's going to make it look more believable and more rooted in reality. So uh, looking at a vehicle like this on top of dust and dirt, like the, the hue and color that you're getting from that dirt is the hue and color from the actual dirt. So when you're doing this, make sure that the image that you use or wherever you pull your color from 
uh, is actually going to be rooted in your scene. So even if you wanted to take uh, a render of your world and you know grab some of the ground color, uh, that would work really, really well. What I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to use this dirt image here. So I'm going to go to my gradient picker. Let's uh, dock designer here on the right so I can do this. I'm going to go pick gradient, and uh, I'm just going to go do a swipe through here. And uh, that should be plenty good for me. Uh, let's see. Um, I want to, again, make sure I'm not ending up too noisy in this value here. Well, I've got some lights. I've got some darks, which is okay. Um, let's say, uh, let's say that's going to be okay. And let's see what this guy looks like. It's not too bad like this, but uh, let me see what he looks like if we actually use the blurred version of this. Yeah, not so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original version of this here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is then I'm going to grab a high quality blur and I'm going to blur the colors coming out of the far side of it. Um, and we're just going to turn the intensity down with the color up. Uh, and again, just trying to, uh, to get something that looks a little splotchy in terms of its color. And we'll throw that up onto our color node. It's not too bad. A um, couple other things that we need to do. Uh, the roughness, I'm going to just use a uh, uniform color here for the roughness. And uh, we're going to make sure that it is absolutely rough, like so. I don't want any reflection in the dust in any way. Uh, we're going to use a uniform color here for the metallic as well. And our dirt will, our dust will not be metallic. Uh, and I don't actually need any height information. This is kind of all that I need here. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's go and export these things out. So I'm going to right click on my graph and we're going to export out as bitmaps. And uh, I'm going to go choose somewhere to place these things. So I've already got my Turner made folder here. I'll go and create a new folder, which I'll just call dirt for the time being. And we'll save them in there like so. Uh, so I don't need the uh, the roughness or the metallic since they're just flat colors. There's no point in exporting those. I don't need the height. I just need my color and my normal. So we're going to export these things out. Now, once my um, exports are done here and close this, I'm going to go have a peek at them. And uh, I'm going to bring open Photoshop here too. At least I was going to. There we are, Photoshop. Let's crack that sucker open. You. There we go. Uh, we don't need this any further. I've got Unreal open here, which is good. Um, I was going to take a look at my textures that are on my desktop in my Turner made folder. So let's go take a look in here. Textures. And I should have a dirt folder in here now that can contains a couple of textures. So we'll let these update here. I'm going to create a uh, another texture. Um, actually, I'm not even going to bother with a new texture. I'm going to use default values in Unreal as well, since I'm not doing anything for ambient, ambient inclusion or roughness or anything like that. So I'm going to go rename these here. This is going to be, thank you, Photoshop. Uh, I don't actually need Photoshop. Let's get rid of that. So let's uh, let's go rename these here. This is going to be uh, dust, and we'll do underscore BC for base color, and then this one we'll call dust underscore N for normal. And uh, I'll move this window, but import those into my texture folder here inside of Unreal, which is ready to go. So in they come. And they've been converted correctly, so I now have my little uh, dust texture here that I can start to uh, to get going. Now, in order to uh, to create dust on a surface, uh, you're obviously going to need a surface. I haven't got any rocks or anything like that, and so I'm going to use one of my chests as um, as the asset upon which I want to lay this dirt. So I'm going to go to my chest here, and there's the chest. Uh, this is a um, a skeletal mesh, but it should work uh, none the different here. So we'll do this away from those chests that are going to open. And I'll just do another chest over here. And this is the one that's going to have the dust and dirt on it. 
So what I need to do, uh, obviously there's already a material on this chest. We're gonna need to create a new material here for this. So I'm gonna go to my materials here and I'm gonna right click and make a new material. We'll call this dust on a top. There we go. So I've now got the ability to put dust on top of this thing. So let's open up this dust on a top material. Uh, and let's do the simplest, simplest, simplest version of of this, and then we'll we'll kind of ramp it up with the ability to uh, to control it a little bit more. So the first thing we're going to do is create our default texture, which is going to be red. Okay, so this is the the regular material. In the in the case of my chest, this is going to be the color that's on my chest here, like this. So here is my chest color. We now need our dirt color or our dust color, and we'll do this with green. So here, look at that lovely green dirt. The other thing we need to do is uh, get a means of blending between those two things. So let's use a linear interpolation. This is going to allow us to shift in between these two colors using a black and white input. So we'll do this. We should see yellow here as the lerp by default is set to 0.5 in the alpha, which should give us half of each of these colors. And so, um, that's yellow, as you see it here. Now, let's try and make sure that we can get dust and dirt to form only on the top of this object. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a pixel normal. Now, what the pixel normal is, is a world space node that looks at the normal in the, uh, on every pixel and how it relates to the world normal. So, uh, in the case of uh, a mesh like this, in fact, if we were to go just plug this into the base color here, you're going to see blue on the top of this thing, red on the X value, green on the Y value, and then the inverted version of those colors in the opposite direction. So this is a means of being able to see where each of these um, pixels are pointing in the world normal. So that's gonna be pretty useful since the world normal can always identify where the top of something is by that blue channel. So let's play around with that, shall we? First, let's remove everything that isn't pointing up. The way that I'm gonna do that is that I'm gonna multiply our pixel node by another value. In this case, we're gonna create another constant and here we have X, Y, and Z and we want Z. So I'm gonna multiply this by a blue image. Now what that's going to do when I plug this into the base color is that we should just see white on top of this object and black below it. And it should be about 50% of the way through this mesh. Something like that. So here's our blue color on top from our pixel normal. And uh, it's being multiplied by the blue of this, which is removing every other color so that we just have a top down render of this thing. Now, since a mask cannot be blue, it needs to be white, we're going to component mask this. And the component mask is going to allow us to separate the color out of this object. Okay, I hope this is still recording. It is still recording. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is, um, now that we've got this kind of separated out here, we're gonna remove that white color. So uh, let's go and take this here and, uh, and, and get a means of desaturating this. That's gonna be pretty easy. As I mentioned, we're gonna use a component mask, component mask, and we're only going to separate out the blue channel or only allow the blue channel out. Um, so again, if we go take a look at this now, we should have removed that blue color and have replaced it instead with black and white. So there we have it. We now have a black and white object here with the ability of controlling top versus bottom. If we plug this into our lerp, and then plug this into our base color, which we should now start seeing is a red sphere 
with green sitting on top and a nice fall off here as it comes to the side of this object. So that's kind of the beginning of this. The next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to go and uh, make sure that this is now using the normal map from whatever mesh that I'm going to be using. Now, this is where we're going to start plugging in uh, the values from our chest here. So I'm going to grab the three textures from the chest and bring these in. So something like this. And we're going to go separate these out. So let's first take a look at what happens here with the normal. So this is going to kind of explain a little bit better what the pixel normal is for. If I plug in my RGB into my normal map category here, this is um, going to apply the normal map to this mesh and the pixel normal is going to pick up on that. So this means that it's now going to start giving us fall off wherever objects tend to be pointing up. So you can see that we're going to get dust in other places it's not just the absolute top of this thing, and that's going to be really, really, really nice. The next thing we need to do is pull in our RGB color, which I'll swap out for the red. Our green color is going to be our dust. So if I go into my textures from here, here's my dust normal and color. I'm going to pull those in. And instead of green, let's go ahead and use our dust. I'm just going to move our little masking component back here. And there, I've got dust settling on the top of this thing. <laughs> Now, let's go in and uh, tweak our normal map here as well. Uh, I'm going to create a lerp for the normal map. And we're going to use our mesh normal, the dust normal, and we'll use the same mask to swap between them. Right, I cannot use the pixel normal for doing this. Forgot about that. Uh, the reason you can't use the pixel normal for doing this is that it relies on the normal of your uh, of your image, and so that's going to be kind of important. We can, however, use it. We're going to bring these down here. We're going to do this another way. Uh, we can, however, do this with a um, with the ambient occlusion roughness and metal. So I'm going to create three lerps here: ambient occlusion lerp. Roughness Lerp, and Metal Lerp. So the Ambient Occlusion Lerp goes in Ambient Occlusion. It gets its Ambient Occlusion from here. And again, I'm going to give it just a default value of 1 for the AO of the dust, so that there's no shadowing in the dust. The Roughness is going to get its value from the map here, and should have a value of 1 for the Roughness of the Dirt, so that the Dirt is completely rough. And then finally, the metallic value of the chest and zero for the metallic value of the dirt can go into our metallic. So that's going to give us this transition here. Now there is a, uh, a downside of this. It's not going to look fantastic out of the gate. Let's go and save this. And uh, let's go take a look at how this is going to work in the uh, in the world here. So here is the chest. And if I head over to our materials tab and I go and grab our uh, what the heck, dust on the top. And we're going to swap this out for the exterior texture of the chest here. What we should see, eventually, is a little bit of a dirty chest. Actually, a very dusty chest. Uh, you're going to see that there's dust kind of all over the place on this thing. 
But once that material has finished loading, come on you. Actually, let's create an instance of this here while we're at it. And uh, I'm actually going to put the instance on top of this guy. So there you have it. We have that dirt um, texture now kind of loading on here. Now, one of the things we, you know, use that color picker to go and pick a bunch of colors and uh, what have you. And uh, not, not really showing up here at all. And that's probably because um, the tiling of this, you know, the UVs for this thing are kind of pretty straightforward. But the, uh, the UVs in this thing are not. So I'm going to create a uh, coordinate node. And I'm going to multiply that coordinate node by a scalar that we'll call dust scale. And uh, let's give that dust scale a default of one so we don't break it. And I'm going to plug this into the UVs of the dust and the UVs of the dust. Now we're not actually using the normal yet from here, but I'm going to plug this in here. Um, let's actually just plug the normal map back in. We don't actually want to play with that yet. So let's save this. And let's go back into our world and take a look at what's going on. So we'll let this compile here. There we have it. Go back and look at the world here. Again, it's going to take it a moment to... There we are. So we have now this chest with dust on it. Um, let's go and, uh, and adjust, shall we, on our instance, the tiling here. So that's not too bad. I'm starting to get some of the splotchy, dirty kind of effect on here that I was hoping for which is good. Now let's take a look at how this works. Let's say I didn't always want this chest to be um, lying like this on its side. I'm gonna move the chest over here and make a duplicate. Let's say we wanted another one to kind of uh, sit on an angle, kind of leaned up on this one. Well, watch this. As I rotate this guy, and we go and place him on top here, you'll see that the dust is starting to fall off in places that are pointing to the ground. In fact, if I rotate this even further, we will get even further the dust shifting where it's positioned. Maybe this one was leaning up like this. And again, it's starting to use only what points up as a means of getting where that dirt is coming from. which is kind of cool. Now we do want the dirt from the normal to show up or the uh, the normal from the dirt to show up, which it's, it's currently not. Uh, it's also, this is hella dirty. Um, that is a lot of dust to have up there. So let's add a little bit of control to our masking ability here. We also uh, need the ability to blend this out here uh, without using our uh, our pixel normal which is uh, kind of going to be a little bit of a problem because that's a little bit more difficult to do without using the pixel normal. Um, and so we're gonna grab something else to do that down here. So uh, let's do that first. Um, what we want is we want the, uh, the normal in world space, normal. Uh, but this time we don't wanna use the, um, this time we don't wanna use the vertex normal. Uh, we wanna use the vertex normal in world space. And the vertex normal is going to be what direction the vertices are pointing. And so we're going to take this and we'll apply our same little bit of math here to it. Like so. And we'll blend this. Let's actually double check that this is doing what we think it's doing. So if I go plug this into just the color here. And this finish is doing what it's supposed to do. Come on, you. Let's 
Clothes designer while we're waiting here. I don't need anything else from this. There we go. So this is indeed showing me the uh, the top of this thing in white and the bottom in black, which is what I want. Uh, the only difference here is that it's not using the normals, so I'm not going to get any of the normals on the dust down here, but that's okay. This will give me the ability of using this to at least split these guys up in the same way. Just not as accurately. So the normal is not going to be as strong in places where there is smaller amounts of dirt or of dust. We can plug this back in here. And we'll replace our normal map. So let's apply that. Now, in terms of adding control to how much dust and dirt appears, there's a couple of things that we can do. Okay. First and foremost, uh, let's add a cheap contrast. So the cheap contrast is going to give us the ability of determining how much fall off we get. I'm going to add a scaler here called contrast that gives us the ability to control this. I'll leave it at zero by default so that we have no contrast. That is now going to be our new version of our mask. I'm also going to want to duplicate these two nodes and plug them in down here. Again, using the same contrast scaler, this is just an instance of the same node, so that it actually affects both of these things the same. The next thing I want to do is be able to change just how much dust and dirt is appearing on this thing. So we can do that. Again, right now we're maxing out at white on top of here, which is a lot of dirt. I want to be able to tone this back. So one means dirt and zero means no dirt or dust. So what I need the ability to do is then to subtract from this value another scalar. And this scalar is going to be the strength. So if we go and rename this strength without the W, uh, this will give us the ability of toning back or um, playing with how strong that um, that node gets. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can either use a subtract, and you can type in a value, and it'll remove that value from your, your original dust mask. Or you can use a multiplication, and you can multiply your strength value to get a smaller node. Now, in order to get this small, I mean, you gotta be aware of what the math is doing. We wanna make sure that we're multiplying by value between zero and one, so a normalized value. Um, if you multiply by two, we're actually gonna make this stronger. So below one, a value below one and uh, somewhere above zero is going to reduce the amount of noise here. So we wanna actually multiply by one by default to change our, our strength. Uh, and then I'm going to just make sure that I'm clamping this just so that because I'm multiplying, I don't want it to get above one. So if somebody does go and type in an incorrect value in here, it won't uh, blow out our node. Again, I'm going to take these two things. I might as well take the clamp as well. And we are going to add them as well to this chain down here. So this can go in here. And that's already in there. And that'll go in there. So we now have a series of nodes for the normal map, a series of nodes for everything else, and then our actual texture setup. So now we'll just compile this. And we'll go see how this works in the world. So again, we'll let this build. I'm going to rotate it sideways here so we can see it a little bit better in the sun. And now we have our dusty chest. I'm going to pop open the instance for this chest. I'll just dock it over here. 
And we'll go back to the uh, map. We'll take a look at this thing this way. Let's kill this search and make this a little bit bigger. Nope, not bigger. This. There we go. Okay. So there's the chest there. I'm going to turn on the other two nodes. And we have our dust scale. Let's set this to 20. Now, the UVs on this mesh are actually skewed. Um, and so I'm not getting a perfect look at the um, the texture here for this thing. Uh, that's because the texture for the chest is actually rectangular. Um, and so that's breaking it a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do here now is uh, play with the contrast. You'll see that as I turn this up, we stop getting any kind of gradient or fall off on our chest. And we just end up with a harsh line. So now dirt is only, or dust is just on the top of this thing. I bring it back and we get some fall off again. Then the strength, again, as I tone this down, it'll start softening just how much dirt appears on the top of this thing. So we're now pulling it back so that it's only just slight. Now, this should work on absolutely everything. What you want to do is go into your dust texture, your material that you've made. This, again, we can add a comment here. Actually, not these, but these. This is world up axis. And this one too is world up normal that we're blending in that way. We then want to pull our dust material out away from the regular material. Now these guys, dust, 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 and dust. So these guys here, I'm going to pull up and away. And I'll put another comment around this. And this is our dust material. Now, you can actually do this in a material function, and I'll show you how to set that up in a moment. We actually broke this node here. There we go. And then these are the materials for the other texture. This is the asset. So if we add a comment for this, this is asset textures. So that's kind of how this thing is set up. Now let's look at actually making this so that it's usable on more than a single instance of this mesh. So the first thing that we could do is we can actually go and plug our um, our textures here in uh, into a way that'll make this a little bit more usable. So uh, more user friendly as it were. So if I go and create a uh, material and I'm gonna do a material function here, uh, MF material function underscore dust. And in here, we'll go and set this up. So I'm gonna make material attributes, which I'll plug in here. Okay. The next thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'll go and grab my dust textures, dust and dust, and we'll pull them into the function. Now it's important when you do this that you put it on everything that is meant to have dust on it. So the base color, this is the normal. I also need a zero for metallic. I need a one for the roughness and the ambient occlusion. Now, if any of your other assets use any of these other nodes, we have to plug something from the dust in here as well. Otherwise, it will not work. So if you're using emissive color or you're using, uh, you know, we can plug this into emissive. Now emissive will work. Um, and so you just want to plug things in here so that everything is connected in the way that it's supposed to be. So there's now our dust material. I'm going to save this. And close that. The other thing that I want to do is my my textures that I'm using for things like the uh, like the chest here. So here's here's the chest here. 
Um, I want to create a material function out of those as well, um, only because it's going to make my life a little bit simpler. So if I go into my materials here, materials, and I create another material function, and we call this MF for material function underscore chest, I can go and build my chest material out of this. So if I go in and look, uh, in fact, here is the chest outer texture that I built before, which I'll just grab everything. So this way it'll actually still work with my previous setup. And I'm gonna paste it in here. We're going to make material attributes again. This will go in here. Okay, so that was my base color. I should probably check and see. Base color, all of that comes from him. This is the ambient occlusion, the rough, and the metallic. This is the emissive. And we'll just compile this. Make sure that we have no errors here. Looks like we're error free, nothing popped up. And so I'll close this. Now let's look at converting this into something that can use those material attributes in a really, really nice way. So the first thing, I don't need the dust material anymore because it's in the function. Also, we don't need the asset textures anymore because they're in the function. So all we have now is our world up, our world up normal and uh and a couple of just empty values here so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go in and make this use material attributes you'll notice now that we just have dust on the top material attributes i'm going to delete all of these nodes here for now and what i'm going to do is create our material functions material function. So here's our material function call. This first one is going to be MF underscore chest. So there's our material function from the chest. I'll duplicate this and we'll use MF dirt or dust. There's our dust material. And now we just want to blend these two things together. So I'm going to grab a blend material attributes, blend A, blend B using an alpha, which We'll plug this guy into. Now, I have a funny feeling this is going to break because of the world normal using the pixel. We'll give it a whirl. And indeed, it is breaking for the pixel normal, so it's not able to do that correctly. So what I'm going to need to do is not just blend these, but break these and blend them myself. So... I'll split these up. That one's for the normal. That one's for that one. And pull this. Oh, come on, you. There we go. So let's pull the dust down. And I'm going to break material attributes so that I can see whatever was being used in there. I'm going to break the material attributes from this one and do this. We're now gonna go and blend these things together. So I'm gonna need some lerps in here. Base color, metallic, roughness. What else are we using? Emissive, aim and occlusion, and normal. We're then going to remake our material attributes using these guys again. Now we don't have to do this. I can actually just turn off the use material attributes here and it'll give me all of them that I can plug in here. So our base color, metallic, rough, emissive, normal, and AO. I'll plug them in from the same values here. A is going to be the default material. So this is gonna be base color, metal, 
rough, emissive, normal, and AO. And then I'll do the same thing coming from these ones. Base color, metallic, rough, emissive, normal, and your AO. And now I can just use my two blending modes to put them back together again. So this one, the only thing it's interested in is the normal, which is the second to last one here. And then everything else is going to get this one. Here. 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 And finally, the ambient occlusion. So I'll save this. Let it compile. There we go. It's looking exactly as it did a moment ago. The idea here now is that we can take this, which is the asset texture, and convert it to a parameter. This is going to give us the ability to swap out whatever this node is. That doesn't seem to actually like doing that. Okay, let's try now that it's done building. It's not letting me convert that to a parameter, so we'll compile it as is here and see if the instance of this does allow us to do it. Now that our material's nice and clean, just on a top instance indeed is not allowing me to go in and change what that uh, what that material is so I can't change the function in here uh, which is a shame that's what we really want to do here is swap this guy out so what we might have to do instead um, if I can't convert this to a parameter uh, let's see if there are parameters here that I can use. It does not appear to have a material function parameter. Okay, so we won't be able to use it in this way, which is unfortunate. Uh, but that's okay. It just means that I delete those and we use a function for the dirt, but we use our actual textures for everything else. So if I go back into the textures and I grab those three again, just means we've got to plug them in manually to do this, just so that we have the ability to do this on multiple uh, meshes. Uh, so that one goes here, this one goes here. So here's the normal, second to last. This is the AO, roughness, and metallic. This is the base color. Um, and in this case, I would need the, uh, the glow map here as well um, to set that up. So anyway, I'll compile this. I need to convert each of these three um, texture inputs, texture samples, to be parameters so that they can be changed on different assets. However, we should now have a level of control on this asset here. Um, that again, as I rotate this, it doesn't matter where it goes, the dust will appear on the top and it'll avoid going on the bottom, which is quite nice. Um, I just uh, don't like the way that this is working. Uh, I'm looking at the blending of the normal maps here, and I don't think that what I want to use is a lerp. I'm just noticing that I'm getting a lot of artifacting um, where the mesh is not using the uh, normal map. So instead of a lerp, I'm going to blend these things together. Uh, 
Uh, actually, no, I am going to use alert. Only instead of this, I'm going to blend. So let's go blend angle corrected normals. Uh, blend. Angle. There it is. So I'm going to blend the normal map here with itself and use that as the alpha. Um, no, that's incorrect. That's not what I wanted. Um, and that's going to break as well. This is a black and white image that's this. I'm lurping between this, which is the normal map. That's why this is broken. It's not this that I want to bend. This goes in here. I want to blend the normal map from the dust with the asset. And it goes in the dust. There we go. Okay, so what that's doing is wherever there is dirt or dust on this thing, it's not just going to be using the normal map from the dust. It's going to be using the normal map from the dust and the mesh so that we end up still being able to see the normal from the mesh here. Uh, and that's why I'm getting all this artifacting on top here is that I'm blending away my normal map. So when I compile this, we should see the normal map from the mesh actually reappear. Again, because instead of replacing, I'm now combining. So if we go take a look at this again, we should get a much cleaner normal map on the top of this thing. There we go. And again, as I go and rotate this thing, that dust should always appear on top. Let's move this up. So this mesh, granted, it's a little difficult to see it actually working here. So let's put it on something else and see if we can see this working in the correct way. So what I'm going to do here is convert this to a parameter. And I'll call it base color. I'll convert the second one to a parameter, which I'll call ARM, ambient occlusion, rough, and metallic. And I'll convert the last one to a parameter, which I'll call norm. And we'll save those. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make another instance of this thing. We won't use the uh, dust on the top instance here. Uh, but I'm going to make yet another instance. And what I'm going to do with this other instance is uh, we'll just make a, uh, again, I haven't got any boulders or anything like that here. So we'll, uh, we'll make a uh, kind of makeshift version of this. So you can see, again, I don't have a tremendous amount of assets in this world. So there isn't uh, a lot of things that can be used for. However, what I can use it for, I go into my materials here. Um, here is the on a top, and I'm going to create an instance of this. And we'll call this uh, brick ball. Like that, just so we have a, uh, <coughs> a clear demonstration of, uh, of how this works. So on every asset that you have in your world, you would go and create something like this. I'm going to turn on the arm, the base color, and the norm. We're going to turn on the contrast and strength as well. We're going to go to our textures and we'll use the brick wall here as a means of being able to pull these on. So here is the brick wall base color, which goes in here, the brick wall normal, and I'll use the roughness for everything else. It's not going to be exactly correct because this uh, texture doesn't work in that way, but I'm going to save that. And with that saved, I'll just go pull a sphere into the world here. And uh, we'll apply this new material, brick ball, to the sphere. Like so. And now we should have some decent control over where the dust and dirt appears on the brick ball. That's peculiar. It is not actually blending on this object. Wow, 
Why, that's very strange indeed. It's showing up in the preview. I can see dust on the top of it, but it's not showing up here. Let's try a uh, let's try a different mesh. Maybe there's something wrong with that mesh. Let's go look for a sphere. Try this sphere. Um, I've I've made a mistake here. In uh, in my dragging, this should be dust on the top. I went and broke the texture here by replacing the parent color. Normal. A R M. That guy's good. Materials, the sphere, there we go. I don't know what I'd done the first time, uh, but it definitely wasn't working the first time. So uh, let's, where'd my sphere go? There it is. So let's go take a look at this now. Uh, we have dust appearing on the top of the sphere. It's, it's quite dusty up there. Uh, we can go into the brick ball uh, material here. Let's dock this here. We don't need the uh, the window here, so I'm going to just make it smaller. Uh, we can tone the strength down so it's not as dusty. Or we can crank it up so it is quite a bit dustier. We can uh, play with the contrast. So it creates a harder or softer edge where the dust is collecting. Uh, I'm not tiling uh, this time. You can see my uh, parameters for tiling are gone. Uh, I would need to add that to the material function, which is not there at the moment. It definitely should be. Um, so if we go to dust on the top, and we look at our dust, here's our dust node. I'm going to go in here. And this is where we forgot to add that. So if I go and create a coordinate node and multiply the coordinate node by a scalar, or by an input, which is just going to be a scalar in here. We're going to preview it uh, at 1 so that we don't blow our UVs out. And I'll plug this in here and save this. Uh, I'll now have a scalar input that I can use. This is going to break the, uh, the other material because there now is a uh, error and that I don't have a scalar here. So I'm gonna create a uh, parameter, <laughs> excuse me, I want a scalar parameter. And uh, where are you? Okay, we'll just create a scalar and convert it to a, under it already is a parameter, what am I doing? Uh, let's go rename this thing. <coughs> and this is gonna be um, dust uh, tiles which again, we'll set a default to one here so that we don't break anything. And when I save this, we'll close this material here and we should see this working quite nicely. So again, I'll dock my instance over here so we can go and play with it. Dust tiles. Again, I'll bring this up. We'll tile it maybe 20 times on this asset. And what that's going to do is it's just going to give me the ability here to get, and you can see I'm getting all kinds of nice high-frequency noise in here now. Uh, if I bring this too high, uh, A, we'll start to see repetition in the pattern of dust. So we're going to start seeing the same dots appear several times over. Um, but also, you can see that that high-frequency noise is probably a little too high now. You know, we're getting very uh, weird kind of noise in here. So maybe 20 works a little bit better. And you can see you're getting really nice kind of uh, detailed surface stuff up here. Now, as I rotate the sphere, the dust is always on top. So it doesn't matter when I position this in my world, how I position it, anywhere that I move it, that dust is going to appear on top. Um, and again, I've got contrast that I, can, uh, that I can play with here so that I can have more or less dust um, in terms of its fall off. And then I've also got its strength here that, you know, I can set very, very, very weak, like so. So again, if you see that, that weakness here, zero, means that there is no dirt. Plus one, there's just a little bit of dust. And one, it's completely dusty on top.
And again, it'll give you a really nice kind of uh, way of blending this stuff in with your environment. So if you have a whole bunch of these assets here, uh, and more importantly, when this looks really, really good um, is when this matches the, the texture on your floor. Um, so if I were to have a material that would match this, uh, this dust stuff here on my floor, in fact, um, here, just pull that in. I'll use the same instance on the floor here. It's not going to look fantastic, but it'll, uh, it'll at least tie these things together a little bit more. So it's still compiling. There we go. So again, you can see now there's a little bit more uniformity between these two things and how that looks like it's being pulled into that ground texture. And so um, there you kind of have it. That is adding dust to surfaces and dirt and uh, that kind of thing. You can do this with just about anything. Um, you can do it with snow. Um, you can do it with uh, if you were to invert your blue channel. So instead of getting the top, you could get the bottom. You know, you can get the caustics that you get from uh, water shining up underneath things. You know, really good if you're doing a bridge going over a river or a pond or something. Uh, making a caustics material that shines up from underneath the water will look very believable. Um, and then once you instance this thing and start putting it on a bunch of your meshes in your world, um, you'll start getting that, um, that look that, uh, you know, makes these things feel a little bit more part of the world and makes the, uh, the whole place feel a little bit more uniform, um, and what have it, what have you. And so there you have it, uh, adding dust and, uh, any kind of surface detail to the tops of objects, uh, another little unreal tutorial for you here. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Um, again, if you have uh, any requests, any questions, anything you want solved for you, um, you know, feel free to drop me a line. You can comment in the uh, comment section of this video uh, if there's something that you don't know how to do and you uh, need some help. Um, by all means, reach out and we'll see about putting together a video like this for you. Again, you can always come and support me. I have a Patreon page. You can find at patreon.com slash turnermade. Um, there you have the ability to come and support me so that it makes it easier for me to make these videos without support from people like you. I just don't have the ability to spend time doing this. And so it is, uh, it is very, very appreciated. Um, that's all I have for you now. Um, until next time, we'll see you again.